Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. I'm a K through six elementary art teacher at a Title I school just outside of Washington, DC. In this video, I'm gonna break down for you what Ketchup and Pickle Day is and how I do this with my students at the end of every quarter. Ketchup and Pickle Day is essentially an end of the quarter free day. Now I have hour long classes. And so what I do is catch ups are students that need to catch up on their assignments. It might be that they were absent. It might be that they are adding a lot of detail to work and they work a little bit slower and they need some extra time to finish. It might be that students have been distracted during the quarter and they do not have things done that need to be graded. So the catch up work is what takes precedent on on this day and those students are um, seated first and they're near me when they are working and they're given that work that they need to complete before they can become a pickle. So it's possible once they get that catch up work done that they can turn into a pickle. A pickle is a student that can pick and choose what they want to do. If you've watched any of my videos before, you have definitely heard me talk about ketchup and pickle day because it is an amazing time saving art teacher tip. But I've gotten some question of how does this tie into my classroom management plan? Well, my management system involves a gold and silver paintbrush. Now the paintbrush is merely just a communication tool between myself and the class and the classroom teacher of how did the class do that week? And I do keep track of this on a little chart that's hung up in my classroom, but that's merely just for my own information and for data. If you're looking for information about my classroom management plan, I'll be sure to link it in the description down below. I do not wait until a class earns a certain amount of golden paintbrushes before they earn this day. I schedule this ketchup and pickle day as an entire week that last week of the quarter. And the reason that I do this is I only have to set up for this once and I only have to clean up for this once. But this covers my plans for the entire week of the end of the quarter. So I am focused on getting my grades done and turned in, maybe even getting them done early, um, getting my room set up for the next quarter. So that might mean cleaning up things that we have finished with for that last quarter and packing up those things and putting them away. It also means planning and preparing for what is coming next in that next quarter and getting those materials ready. When it's ketchup and pickle day, I hang up these adorable signs that I got on Teachers Pay Teachers. I will definitely link them um, in the comments down below, but I hang these on my door so that students don't ask me all week, is it ketchup and pickle day? They can just see as they walk by that it's gonna be that week. I am hanging up with double-sided tape and a tip I have for whenever you use double-sided tape is just have like a yucky sticky pair of scissors that you always use for those kind of projects so your scissors do not get trashed. So throughout the quarter, when we finish a project and we sort of move on, we take all of the unfinished work and put them in these little ketchup folders with a little clip and then put it inside of my class folders. Now the class folders is something that you can see in my managing the artwork video about how I organize things by class, but this would just keep me organized so that I can quickly know on ketchup and pickle day what stuff in that folder is unfinished. Um, if it's not clear, like we finish a painting and some people might be like, I'm not done, I wanna work some more. Um, this is how I remember. I use these mailing labels that I print out with a little bottle of ketchup and the words ketchup please on it. And then we would just stick this onto their artwork so that I remember not to grade it, that they want to work on it um, during the ketchup and pickle day. And then I will grade it after they finish. This is how I set up for ketchup and pickle day. I keep all of my tables clear and choose some at the front where I'm gonna set out student work that is not finished. And those students are pickles. So they're gonna sit with me and finish those projects so that I can then immediately grade them. I set up one table where I cover it with paper. And then I also use these little plastic tablecloths on top. And then all of the messy painting happens at this table. Um, and this is just for free time. So I have the temper cakes out, the paint sticks, and also the paint dot um, markers along with some paper. So students can choose what they'd like to make there. And then you may have noticed that the other tables are completely empty. So those are workspaces for students that are pickles. So they can choose if they would like to do painting as their choice that they pick. They can choose 
if they want to do um, like little coloring crafts. And so I just set out tons of things and this is the fourth quarter. So this is just things that I have left over here. I have set up scratch art that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. Um, I've got a Dollar Tree haul video, but this is one of the favorite things that I've gotten this year. It's a little 50 pack of those um, scratch art squares. It only comes with one stick. So I did have to supplement that and get some uh, sticks from School Specialty from a brand called uh, Creativity Street. Um, I set out beads and pipe cleaners because it's easy for students to tie this themselves. Um, we're in the fourth quarter, so those are the only colors of beads that we have left. Um, I put out just scraps of paper that we have left over um, to use up. Any extra random things from like old projects that I used to do that I no longer need. Um, this is something that we had done last year for Ketchup and Pickle Day to make um, a little flamingo. So I have all the pieces there. Just a random scrapbook of, it can be things that are donated to me that I just don't need or I don't have enough of for the whole class to use. Um, this was left over from a pre-kindergarten, um, like a kindergarten orientation project that I did that my students saw in the class and they were all asking to do on the free time. Uh, this is one of those surprise drawings where the students draw something in there and then they fold it up so it looks like the um, shark or the fish is eating it. So it really is just a make whatever you want glorified coloring day. And I set all these things up along my counters. I'm really lucky that I have all of this space uh, to do that. This is a little craft. Um, with that's like where you make a popsicle and you use little popsicle sticks. I've got little wiggle eye stickers there. And this is my spin art station. So students use the little spin art machines. I pre-cut little squares of paper, four inches by four inches and fill up this shoe box. And then students use, this is in bad shape here. <laughs> um, students use tape so that they can tape uh, the paper down to the spin art machine. And then we go ahead and use markers um, to do that spin art. So it really keeps it low mess. Um, what I found before is that if I set things up at my tables, my tables just get trashed. So doing it this way, students get the material they want for the project that they want. They choose where they want to sit. Um, and then those tables just get cleaned at the very end. I have an area back here where some students choose to work, where I have like a beanbag chair and those little lap desks. Also, this is where, and goodness, I need to clean this, you know, managing the mess here, um, where I have origami books. It's kind of a big hit with students and origami paper. And there's also free draw paper here. Um, on my front carpet, this is where a lot of students will hang out. Uh, and this is where I'll put out like manipulative type toys. So this time around, we got out the magnet tiles and the Legos. And then students just use these right here on my front carpet and then clean that up when it's time to go. Another favorite are these texture rubbing plates that have either a fashion set or a superhero set. I think I picked these up at the Dollar Tree. Um, students will rub that with a crayon. I also put out drawing books. So these are just books that I've gotten from the library and copied and then put in three pronged um, folders for students to use. A lot of students like to use these with tracing paper Near the front of my classroom, I set up a big red bin so students are not running around bringing me the work that is ketchup. They're just putting the completed ketchup work here for me to grade. If you are going to be doing a ketchup and pickle day in your classroom, I highly recommend that you set up the rules and the procedures for how things are going to run. When my students come to art um, on this week, there's a sign outside that says that it's ketchup and pickle day. And I also have this slide up on the board ready to grade them. This slide comes from pocket full of primary, the ketchup and pickle uh, that you see in the back. I have overlaid how I like my students to sit when they come in to the art room. I start off with a little clap. One, two, one, two, three. Don't hit clap. And then I ask students to turn their voices off and put their eyes on me. We would start off with our greeting and then move into our song of how to sit if this was one of my younger grades. I remind the students again what expectations are for good listening. They're going to be sitting on their bottoms. And then we set the timer. Now this timer lets us know um, how much time we have to work and when we need to stop and clean up. So I put that picture in so that I remember to set the timer. This timer is called a time timer or a visual timer. Um, they're available on Amazon. They're a little bit pricey, but it's one of those tools in my classroom that I use every day. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in that. And then I show off 
the good listening and model that for students. So I say Mona, they say Lisa, Mona, Lisa, Mona, Lisa. Do a quick body check that your hands are still, your eyes are forward, and your lips are zipped. At this time, I would change my sign into the red zone. For my students, they know that this means that they have to turn their voices off and show off their best listening. If they have a question at this point, then they need to raise their hand. I would explain what ketchup and pickle means. So ketchup is somebody that must sit and finish their work. I have these students seated all together, and normally I'm either sitting at that table or I am working close by. And pickles are be someone that gets to pick and choose what they want to do. Once students are finished with their work, they can turn into a pickle. I would go over what my normal classroom rules are and say that those same rules that we recite each and every week, those rules are still in effect today. Um, I do not say the rules on the ketchup and pickle day because there's a lot more information to go over, but that is something that I do each and every week to set high expectations for my students. What you've seen in this so far would be my routine of what I do each and every class. I do have hour long classes. If you're interested in how I start art, I have a video all about that and I'll be sure to link it in the description down below. On this day, I do not give the gold or silver paintbrush award, rather I do mystery cleaners. So mystery cleaners is something that I do, so it motivates students to stop working and to start cleaning up. I don't normally give out prizes, but I do for this. So I have a ketchup and pickle day just once a quarter, but this happens four times in a school year, and that's the only time that I do prizes. What I will do is find some mystery things around the room that are in the wrong spot. So I might notice a glue stick that got left on the floor or marker that needs to be put back. It could be a chair that needs to be pushed in. And I will watch to see what students are the lucky ones that find those items and then return them to the correct spot. And then those students, when we are all cleaned up and lined up, will come out of the line and they get to choose a small prize. You'll need to set up the expectation that students can only take home what they make. So make it very clear that things like Legos and magnetiles and scissors and markers, that those things are going to be staying at school because those are tools that you'll be using again and again. Things that students make on ketchup and pickle day, those items can go home. So if they color a picture for someone, if they make a bracelet, those items can go home. If they have a handful of beads or coloring pictures that are not colored that they're bringing home for a brother or a sister, that would be stealing. So just be very clear with your students. My students, um, and I work in a Title I school, are very respectful of this um, and very caring about this. They know that we will be doing this again. We do this four times a school year, so they do not need to panic and take items. Um, they will have another chance later on in the school year. We um, also go over some additional rules. So this is just making sure that if there are misbehaviors that I may see occurring on the ketchup and pickle day, I'm kind of setting that clear boundary ahead of time so students could be seated in time out and they would know that these things were not allowed. So I go over the fact that we're not throwing things because we're going to be using Legos and beads and other small items. Just let your students know that ahead of time so that that's not an issue in your class. Um, being kind. So set this up as they need to be kind to themselves. Students are going to be creating their own challenges. And for some of them, this is actually really difficult. They're used to having your help. They're used to having you kind of guide them through the process. So some of them will get frustrated and kind of shut down, guide them that they can work through their problems. They can ask a friend for help. They can even pivot and try something different if what they're doing is not working. They also need to be kind to each other on this ketchup and pickle day and kind to the art materials. I will let my students move around, but I do not let them run. So they're allowed to move wherever they'd like to sit in the room at any of the tables or be sitting on the carpet area. Now, I do not really have my room set up in centers, so to speak. I really just leave my tables blank and then I have different activities around the outside edge of my room on the counter and students bring the desired activity to a seat and then they can work on it. When they're done, they're asked to put that activity away. In the past, I have set up activities with centers where the materials are on the table and I found that students somewhat disrespected materials or didn't really clean things up as well as when I did the system of just getting the tables completely clean. That's what we do on a normal school day, so I think maybe that's just a process and a um, situation that they're a little more familiar with uh, in my art room. 
be sure to go over what's okay to make and then also what's not okay to make. Um, so students should not be making anything with weapons or blood or anything that's scary. They should make something similar to what you would make together, not something they would imagine that you would never do. Um, think about how they use their times. So you don't want to use their um, free minutes for making something that's going to hurt someone's feelings. You don't want them using their free time for hurting someone physically or hurting somebody with their words. If someone is not following any of the regular art room rules or the ones that you detail um, at the beginning of your lesson, students should be placed in a time out. So I set a timer for five minutes and then students are able to rejoin the group. Whenever my students have a time out, I let the classroom teacher know this just on a note. And I also message the family because this is not something that should be happening. Um, and especially students who are losing their free time. They're going to be motivated to make sure that they are following the rules and that they're not losing out on any time. I let my students know that I am a catch up. So what that means is, is I'm catching up on all of my work too. While my students are working, they're finishing things and I'm trying to immediately grade those things. I also want to figure my grades and enter my final grades into my computer system so that when the class rocks out, my goal is that my grades for that class are done. If I'm able to get that done, then I may start prepping materials for that grade level, cleaning up supplies that we are already done with with that grade level and preparing for the next quarter. I set things up so that students can be fairly independent on this day so that I can work on other projects. So I set out bags for students to put what they make inside of. So this kind of keeps their um, projects that they create together and organized. They just simply write their name on the outside of the bag. Some students decide to decorate these bags as well. And then the centers that I set up are pretty self-sufficient. So I have beads and pipe cleaners that students could take to a table if they'd like to work on that. I use the pipe cleaners um, from school specialty. I just buy the really big, cheapest pack that I can find. And those pipe cleaners are great because students can just twist them to tie them. They don't need to tie a knot. For the paper bags, I either order them through school specialty and have my school pay for those, or in the past, I have spent my own money and found that the cheapest ones are at Walmart. I've bought them before at Dollar Tree, but now you get so few and it's $1.25 that the best deal really is at Walmart. You can get a hundred pack of them for, I think it's around $2. Um, spin art is another station that I have set up that I'll make sure I share with you in action. But this is a station that I set up with just a bin that I normally keep in my storage closet. In there, I keep my masking tape. I cut pre-cut um, white pieces of paper, four by four, and students tape these down to the spin art machine. These are spin art machines that are, um, you know, kid powered. The kids squeeze them and that makes it spin around. I have used the battery powered ones in the past and honestly, they're better because they're a lot faster, but they are really, really noisy. And the noise on that day gets to me because there's already the environmental noise of the students moving around. So I have found that the um, ones that are just kid powered are the best for me. Also, the cost of replacing the batteries can get to be a little bit cumbersome. Um, I will pick things from Teachers Pay Teachers and just little free crafts that I find on the internet to set up as ideas of what students could work on during this day. So this one was just a very simple origami project that I found that was, had a bunch of different animal patterns that came with it. It was really self-explanatory and all grade levels really enjoyed this. I'll be sure to link this down below because that was a great product that I purchased. I also set up things such as magnet tiles and Legos for students to work collaboratively uh, together on my carpet area. I let them know what supplies in my room are available for them to use. So they're allowed to use any of my crayons or pencils, but when they're done, they have to put them back. I let them use any materials within my art buffet. That's what I call this little area that I have by my door. Um, not, of course, the gold and silver paint brushes, but they're able to use any of the glue sticks, pens, rulers, hole punches, my decorative scissors, bottles of glue permanent markers as long as they put those items back. So those aren't left throughout my room. Um, they're able to use them at a desk and then they have to put them back when they are finished. I let them use my markers, but I tend to get out my old markers from previous school years. Or if I have any markers donated um, at the beginning of the year, 
I tend to put those out for my ketchup and pickle day so that we have nice markers that we use for our graded projects. Definitely, if you aren't already, keep just an empty um, bucket of marker lids. The marker lids don't need to match the markers, but it's more important that your markers don't uh, get dried out. So I leave those there. And then my students are really pretty good about matching these up when it's time to clean up. I will set up just one painting table. I know I got some questions about this, of if I allowed um, a free choice painting. I do, but it's a painting that's pretty low mess, and I make my students take them with them today, uh, the day that they create them. So I cover this table typically with like the roll paper from the school, and often I will either put newspaper underneath here or the plastic tablecloth on that as well. So there's no chance. Um, of the paints leaking down and staining the tables because I'm leaving this cover on there for the whole week. The whole classes um, that come in my whole school are using this and it really needs to be standing up to a lot of mess and there could even be water spills at this table. I set out my temper cakes, paint sticks, and dot markers. So those are all the choices that the students have and I leave paper there. A lot of the little like decorative crafts and things too on paper, I'm allowing them to use those paints and to kind of create projects that they would like to do. If students finish a painting project, they write their name on it and they put it on my drying rack. When it's time to go, I ask students to get everything off the drying rack and to take those things home. Students are not permitted to use paints anywhere else in the art room on this day, except for at this one table. I will have tons and tons of fun coloring pictures out. Students really like to make masks. Um, you will need to kind of guide them through um, the whole group, showing them how to fold so that they can cut out the eyes. I use hole punchers for the holes in the side, and then we use those same pipe cleaners we're using for bracelets to um, adhere the mask onto the students. Um, one option that we did before was like a chalk bunny. So we have different cutouts and outlines and then students would smudge the chalk. If I'm doing something like that, I make a short YouTube video. Um, I have a channel just for kids and I will show that, showing them, you know, 60 seconds of a time lapse up. Okay, here's one of the options of something that you might like to make today. Something kind of different and fun with some different materials that they could use. I think those are some springtime examples. So that's the video that I have up on my other um, channel called Mrs. Jarvis. These were really fun. They're kind of like little bracelets that I found on Teachers Pay Teachers and I found some little spring bunnies. Those are the bracelets of kind of how they work when they're cut out. My students are totally into soccer. So think about what your students really enjoy. Is there a new Disney movie coming out? Is there something that, you know, a character that seems, kids really seem to love? And see if you can kind of bring some of those ideas into your classroom. I do theme my ketchup and pickle days for the season and any holidays that would be surrounding that season. Um, not all of my students celebrate the same holidays, so I only have a small amount of holiday things that I put out, but I create a wide variety for each ketchup and pickle day. I like to rotate what things are available to keep it kind of fresh and fun every year. Um, then some of the same things that they've done the year before are kind of fun and new for them again. A big favorite is doing paper puppets. I also remind my students that they're welcome to use scissors and cut things out, but they have to put the scissors back. So I show them this picture kind of near the end um, of my directions and remind them where I keep the scissors on my door and that at the end of class, we're gonna be checking to see that they are all there and put back. I know some people ask what were some of my students' favorite activities that we have put out for Ketchup and Pickle Day. Students really enjoy fortune tellers, particularly ones where they can color it, cut and fold. Uh, Play-Doh is always a big hit. I do use like the Dollar Tree plastic tablecloth, so at the end I can just kind of wrap everything up and then shake things out into the trash. And my students really enjoy using decorative hole punches on this Ketchup and Pickle Day. As far as cleanup goes, I would just take care of doing a lot of the cleaning from my end. Um, on Friday, you know, once I'd finished my very last class doing um, the ketchup and tickle time. Um, students are asked to either be sweepers or wipers once all the tools are put back. So I offer these small little brooms that students can sweep up things on the table or on the floor. And I also have out baby wipes so students can help to wipe the tables. I sure hope you found this video to be helpful. If you've got some ideas that you want to share for Ketchup and Pickle Day, leave them in the comments down below. Also, if you've got any questions, pop them down there and I'll be happy to answer it.